Well, hello there, here you are with Dan in Essex, UK, and the main purpose of my channel is to show people how to grow their own fruit and vegetables, no matter what size garden, allotment, or growing space they do indeed have. So today we're going to turn this lovely little area here into a vegetable and fruit garden. You can check me out on Dan underscore Home Gardens on Instagram, and please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell if you want to hear about more notifications from my channel. Never in recent times has it been more important for us to grow our own food, and I'm absolutely determined to help people do that. We are going to start by setting a grapevine. This vine I planted about two or three years ago. I grew it from a cutting, and you can see down there where it grows from and looking up here you can see all of these lovely little grapes forming on here so grapes will benefit from a south or southeast facing wall or fence for the extra warm microclimate it will provide if you live in a cooler area such as the north growing grapes in a cold greenhouse or polytunnel can be beneficial by cold I mean unheated in the winter as grapes need cold weather in order to put them into dormancy Dormancy occurs when the vine proceeds to lose its leaves for the winter months. The vine will then go into a period of rest and leaf out in the spring. I have a variety of grape here called Muller Thurgau, which is an eating or a wine grape. And I'm going to plant it here up against this southeast facing fence, which will hold some warmth from the sun and it will benefit the vine by providing a nice warm microclimate. So in general, when you're planting grapes, they're not too fussy about the soil that you plant them in. The only thing they won't tolerate is soil growing medium that doesn't drain well, okay? If you've got soil like that, you can consider growing a grapevine in a pot or working on the soil in which you're going to plant it in by putting some nice organic matter in. So they will tolerate a pH of about six and a half to seven. They will go outside of this, but if you aim for six and a half to seven, that is ideal, but there is a bit of leeway either way. So when grapes grow, they put down deep roots and therefore they like deep soil, okay? So something like this is great. And the soil here, as you could see, is very well draining. It's very sandy-like, so grapes will do very well here. So this has been growing away in this pot for probably a year or so now. So it's put out some nice roots. It's a grafted variety. There you go, you can see how strong the roots are. And you can see what we've got there, really, really beautiful root structure. So I'm expecting this vine to do very, very well. So I've dug a hole a little bit deeper than the depth of the root structure here. And what I'm going to do is just put it in like so, and I'm going to proceed to get it as central to the fence as I can in between. I think that looks quite nice. And I'm literally going to just proceed to put some soil in like this. Now you might be tempted to put some fertilizer in when planting grapevines, but you don't actually need to because they tend to do well in poor soil, okay, due to the depth that they put their roots down. So the way that grapevines get ready to fruit is they put out their growth and then the following year you get your grapes off of canes that grow from the previous year's growth so if you can you want to try and get your vine to grow as quick as you can and one way to do this is a microclimate if you set them in a greenhouse or a polytunnel you will find that they grow quicker because of the extra heat acts as a catalyst so for instance if this vine manages to grow Ooh, to about here this year, the chances of getting some grapes on there are quite high next year because there'll be plenty of the previous year's growth in order for the grape to set spurs off of canes in order to fruit. Now I'm going to water this. I'm going to water it twice a week initially and then I'm going to leave it. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to encourage it to quickly establish a good root structure. Now everything I'm going to plant out here, excluding the grapevine, must be planted out after the last frost date, okay? Because they're not frost hardy. So you really do not want to lose the efforts of your hard work. So here I'm going to have runner beans. I've got two varieties, Butler, of which is a red flowering variety, and Moonlight, which is a white flowering variety. So the soil here, is likely to be quite compacted. 
So what I'm going to be doing is just lightly digging it over and I'm also going to dig in some nice organic matter. So for that you could use some of your own homemade compost, you could buy some compost, you could use some leaf mold, well rotted horse manure, get it in there, make that soil nice and strong and start building it and hopefully it will serve you well for many years. Now I've lightly dug over the soil here. I'm generally not too much into digging because it can actually damage the soil structure. But because this soil was compacted, I want to be able to allow the runner beans to push their roots down so they can extract nutrients from the soil. So I've lightly dug it, probably about three or four inches, something like that. And I'm in the process of just gently pushing in some ready-made compost here. Now you can see the compost here is mixed with the soil and I'm now going to get some nice organic granular feed and put that in as well. And I'm just going to lightly work this in. I want to leave a lot of the new growing medium sitting on the top and over time that will naturally be taken into the ground by the weather and the worms and I'm just going to gently do that and then that now sets me a lovely base for me to plant my runner beans in. And I'm just breaking up some of these little clods of dirt. Some of these big stones could also be removed. I'm going to do some watering, make it nice and moist. This will help the runner bean plants to establish. So runner beans need a support to climb up and you can use things like string for this or a trellis, but I'm going to be using bamboo canes. So you can see my structure that I've built here out of bamboo canes. It's very simple like that. And then a bamboo cane at the top, holding it together. And I've tied it up with this washing line. And you can see on this one here, these canes were quite small so I've simply tied another smaller cane to the top here to give a little bit of extra height. It's sturdy enough in order to hold the vines here but if you're in an area where you know there's very very strong winds or in an open space something like that really really make sure that uh, the support you're building is strong enough to support your runner bean plants and also the beans which will come later in the season. Now I'm going to plant the runner bean plants. So I'm going to have a red flowering variety and a white flowering variety growing up the same cane because I like that. It looks nicely ornamental. So I'm going to set them front and back, one here and one here. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because if you put one here and one here, and then you proceed to do the same here and here, the roots will be growing closer together than if you put them front and back. So they'll give each plant the availability of more water and more nutrients. Now I've chosen some of the best specimens and these are the red flowering variety butler. And these are the white flowering variety moonlight. So I'm going to start with butler planting each one to the right of each cane. I'm going to do the back row first. So that's the red flowering variety butler all set on the back canes. I'm going to set moonlight to the left of the canes. So there they are all set. I'm going to leave the blooper in because although I said I was going to grow them from front to back, I've actually grown them from left to right. But uh, that's how gardening goes and we all make mistakes. There you go people. That's the lovely runner beans planted out. Now as these runner bean plants grow, it's advisable to tie them to the canes, particularly if you're in an exposed area, a windy area to stop them blowing and what can often happen is they can often end up growing up the cane that you don't want them to grow up. So for instance, you'd like these to grow up this cane, but they might end up growing up this one or indeed up this one. So it's good to sort of be aware of where they're growing. 
little bit of string and you can then tie them to the cane that you want. Once they're established and growing up, they'll find their own way. But initially, you know, get a little bit of string and just help guide them into the direction in which you would like them to grow. The next thing I'm going to plant are courgette plants. Now I have variety zucchini here. And the reason why I've chosen to grow these is because they're said to be able to crop in seven to eight weeks from planting. So that is an advantage. Now, I'm going to grow them here, so they're hungry plants. So the first thing I'm going to do is dig probably about a square foot and fill it up with some compost. Once again, you could use some compost out your compost bin. You could buy some compost, leaf mold, well rotted horse manure. And the general advice is to have them about three quarters of a metre a yard apart, okay? But I'm going to set mine in close proximity. So I'm going to have two here. One about here and one probably about here. So now I'm going to dig some compost in. So here are my holes dug with the compost added and I'm going to once again put some organic granular feed in there just to give them some more nutrients for some good growth. I'm going to add some water. So here are my plants, good specimens. So I'm going to plant these here, put that in like that. We'll be careful because it's quite clumpy and stony soil. So a little bit of a gap there and just put my plants in like that. Push them down, give them a bit of a soil all around, Turn them in, and the same with this one here. So the next to go in are tomato plants. So I have two varieties here. I have Money Maker, and I also have Golden Sunrise, and they're going to go up against the southeast facing fence once again for the warm microclimate that it will provide. So what I've done is dug a hole and put a little bit of the compost in, about two handfuls. I've also got here a little bit of the old granular feed. A bit of that's going to go in like this. And I'm simply going to proceed to put the plants in. Just like so. You may have noticed that they're in the cardboard pots. I've left them in them because the pots will disappear as the season progresses. Next to go in are the dwarf beans. Now these are variety tender green and dwarf beans can crop in as little as seven to eight weeks. So a really great thing to grow. Now these are the, a bush variety. So that means that they don't need canes to climb up. You can get climbing varieties of dwarf beans. You may have to put some little stakes in to tie them to, depending on what area you live in or how strong the plants end up. For instance, if you're living in an area with lots of wind, which is very open, then you may need to tie them to like a little stake or little cane. But here, they should just be self-supporting in this patch here. So the way I'm going to sow these, or plant them rather, is the same as I did with the tomatoes. I'm going to loosely take the top of the soil and just disturb it a little bit and then I'm going to proceed to put a little bit of compost in and then simply put these plants in and add a little bit of the granular feed, water them and they should do very very well here. There we go, so that is the start of the new vegetable garden. Now. We have a nice combination of things here, dwarf beans, runner beans, courgettes and tomatoes. So they are temporary culture, if you will, meaning they'll only last for one season. But we also have the grapevine, which is part of permaculture. And the reason why I've added that to this project is because when I look at gardening, I like to look at it as a long-term thing. 
and you can watch that from year to year grow and hopefully get more productive. And with regards to soil, you can keep working on that and you can take gardening as far or not as far as you wish. So if this year you did something like this and left it at that, that would be a very, very good start. And with gardening, I always advise people to start off small, start off gently, get success and build from there and consider it a long-term thing. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you like my work, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And you can always check me out on Dan underscore Home Gardens on Instagram if you're interested. Thank you very much for viewing and see you next time.